Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. It's Kim here. And aren't these just a lovely bunch of coconuts? Um, I'm going to try to lift this. It's on two pieces of paper. I'm just going to try to lift this so it's a little bit closer for you to see. And then I'm going to show you how I made these. They are just little tiny, and I'll, I'll put this down now and I'll pick one up. They're just little um, squares of fabric. I'm using some quilted fabric, and I'll show you that in a second. And then I've used the little um, inchy images. Now, these are in my member section. There are three sheets like this, uh, with, which have 63 uh, items on them, because there are three, six, seven across, and that means they're nine down. So um, each page has 63, so that's 189. Ooh, did it. Um, so, so those are in the member side, but there are um, there is a free sheet on the uh, uh, freebie side that has some inchy images in it as well. And you can use any type of images. Now, I had a whole... Um, a whole pile of quilted pieces of fabric. They were just leftover bits and pieces um, from, you know, from pillows and from placemats. I had a project I, I did earlier in the spring that I never showed you was some needle books that I had made. And so these were just the off cut fabrics. And you know me, I can't throw anything away. So I said, okay, what am I going to do with these? And the only thing I could come up with was this. So what I did, um, I'm just going to get these out of the way. And I, I, my plan is to use all of this stuff up. That, that's why it's sitting on this desk. And, you know, with 189 images to choose from, I should have no problem getting them all done. Just not on camera today. So um, I had all these pieces left over. Now some of this has not as uh, intense of sewing on the fabric so it's it's more lumpy and bumpy and and not as quilted so what I did is I is I took my sewing machine um, and I just zigzagged all over those pieces and wherever they were really lumpy and just uh, sewed back and forth zigzag and all over the place until they were flatter and thicker piece now in making these you don't have to use quilted fabric you can use pieces of felt, you could use pieces of tapestry, pieces of thicker fabric. Um, you can even use um, some chipboard and glue some paper down. It, it's really just to create a base. And the only reason I'm using this is because I, I have it and, and I have an option to use it. Um, otherwise, you know, I would make them out of whatever I have at the time. So don't go out and buy a quilted pillow because by the time you're done, you don't see it anyway. So I just cut off a piece that was complementary to, to the size of the images. And I'm, I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to get this a little bit out of the way. I don't need a lot of room, but I, I will bring them back when, when we're done. Um, so, so I have just a little uh, square here. And I just cut off a, an image. And I'm just going to cut off this sheet to keep going. Now these images do repeat um, a few times because I think each page has 12 unique ones. So you will you will have duplicates definitely if you're if you're working off of one of these sheets. Um, but you you know it's not to say you have to do them all. Um, you can do other things with them, of course. Um, this was just a little project that I wanted to share that what I was going to do and Because I like to work quickly. All I did is I I hot glued this picture uh, down to the paper or to the fabric And like I said if you don't have little squares of quilting fabric you can use just about anything to create these so right now it's looking you know kind of lost on that uh, quilty uh, fabric so I'm, I'm going to decorate around the edges with lace and trim so I have a bunch of different styles of trims here I hope you can see and again it's not about um, you know going out and buying stuff to decorate these with I have these things but if you don't then use what you have 
Um, it can be fabric, it can be uh, pieces of ribbon, lace, uh, it's whatever you have on hand. And in fact, um, this one here, I didn't even make it on the quilted fabric. This is actually a little piece of lace that I used and uh, I glued the image onto the back or to the, to the lace and then just worked off of there. So again, it's just a means for me to use up these pieces, but it's whatever you have. So I started out with, well, in this case, I'm, I'm going to do the sides with a little bit of Rick Rack ribbon. And because this is a smaller ribbon, I'm just going to use my um, tacky glue to just run a bead of glue across here, down the side, on either side. And all I'm doing is framing this piece. So I'm just going to put a piece down like that over top of the glue, push it in a little bit. Oh, I just stuck my finger in the other side. Okay, there we go. And again, pushing my fabric into the glue. Let me go and just wipe that off on my jeans. and trimming them away. So that's all I did was I just put two little pieces of this ribbon. You can use fibers, you can um, use cord, lace, whatever you want. So now I'm just gonna frame the top and the bottom. Now along the bottom I have this, uh, where did it go? This, it's like a little mini pom-pom. And I've never had a use for it until now, so I figured I'm just going to add that to the bottom. Again, you might wanna add some gathered lace but this is where I'm just gonna take my hot glue gun and run a little bit of glue across the bottom. And place this into it. Now I work right off of the rolls or the, the uh, ribbon. I don't cut it until I've glued it down so that I'm not wasting anything when I do glue it down. And then I always go a little bit over the edge so I can trim off that roughness. So I've added that, and now I want to add some other little trim. But again, it doesn't have to be trim. Um, it could be wool. Actually, I have some wool right here, just some wool fiber. And when it's the smaller stuff like this, then I tend to use the, um, the tacky glue only because it's just a little easier to not have a ton of glue in my way. And I'm just going to lay this across there as close to the edge as I can get it. And trim it away. And I can do more fine tuning once it's dry. But I put a little bit there and then I'm going to use this other trim because I, you know, I have uh, lots of different trims. Uh, you know, I don't like the other lace, the other trims hanging out there. So I think, um, I think I'll use this one maybe. I have a lot of this trim. Okay, so I'm gonna use that. So I'm just gonna again take the hot glue and run a bead of glue across the top here. I just wanted enough just to cover the edges of the picture and just to frame it a little bit. And I like working with different kinds of things. Uh, so it's whatever you have on your table. And trimming that away. And now it's just to add a little bit of decoration. Now, if I was going to say um, a tool for you to add to your collection, and I don't have it in front of me, but it's a, just a little, um, one of those little thumb punches to make these little mini flowers. There's so many different kinds out there. And these are a great way to use up scraps of, of paper that you have. I will, you know, sometimes I'll just take a pile of them, especially strips. You know, we always have so many strips. And I will just take the punches and I will just punch the whole thing. And then it just goes in the jar. I end up with different colors, different sizes. And I, uh, you know, when I think of it, I come to the jar and I, I pick out a handful of pieces that I would like to use. 
And so in this case, I'm going to use this beige one and this green one. Yeah, I think that's about all I need for there. And because they're flat, you know, when you when you punch these things out, they're they're uh, flat because they're paper. I just take um, a pen without the the uh, piece sticking up, but any kind of pokey tool that you can kind of just wrap this around, or you could just squish squish it with your fingers too. It's just to give it a little bit more uh, dimension so it doesn't look so flat. And then I just kind of peel the petals back a little bit just to give it a little bit more oomph and then same with this little one here I'm just going to wrap it around my pen and just kind of squish it just so it gets sort of like a little cup if you can imagine that and then I'm going to glue them down a little bit of hot glue underneath one right there and one right next to it, maybe. Sort of overlapping a little bit. And then I have this uh, tray with some odds and ends beads that were in a jar. And deep in the depths here, I've got some little pearls. Little tiny ones. Mm, just because I want to, I think I'm going to find two. Sure, I will. There we go. So one's white and one's kind of an off-white, but you won't see that when I'm done. And then taking my tacky glue, I'm just going to put a dot of glue in the center. Now, if you don't have uh, beads or pearls, you can use some sequins. You could use um, uh, your little, is it stickles? Stickles, I think. That's the second time I've said that word. Um, and that's a lot of glue, but thankfully it will dry clear. But if you have that glitter glue, that dimensional glitter glue... Um, you can use that as well. You can actually stitch them on if you want to. I can't be bothered. It's just a little tiny pearl that I'm adding on there, so it's no big deal. And then I want to add a button. And I just brought a small jar of, of buttons with me. And again, I could stitch this button on. I'm going to put it up there, I think. I could stitch that button on, but that means I have to get on a needle and thread and uh, knot it and it take time. So instead, what I'm doing is I'm working right off of a roll of crochet cotton. And you've seen me work with this stuff before. And I'm just going to take a piece of this crochet cotton and from the front of the button, I'm going to go through the button And then come up the other side from the back. And working right off the roll, I, I never just cut it because then you have more waste. I just um, keep it long enough so I can put a couple of knots in it in the front. Now, if you would rather have the stitch look where you've stitched on a button, then you would go the opposite direction and have your knots at the back, which works fine too. Um, so I've got this button now uh, knotted on the top, and I'm just going to take the two ends and hold on to them. So it gives you something to hold on to. And this is the back side of the button here. I'm just going to take a dot of glue and then glue it where I want the button to be. So I'm just putting it on the corner there of the lace. And I'm just going to hold it for a second to, till it adheres. With the hot glue, it catches pretty quickly. And then taking my scissors, I'm going to trim those little pieces short. And voila, just like that. You watched me do it. Now, you, you really don't notice much of the quilting. So like I said, it really doesn't matter what the base is. Um, the only thing now that I'm going to do is I'm going to finish it with a little bulb pin, which I have a pile of them here somewhere on my table. This is how I work, you guys. This is how I get her done. Oh, here we go. And taking a bulb pin, I'm just going to open it up. And I can either feed it through the lace or through the fabric itself. Now, if you don't have a... These things are not the sharpest things there are and to go through all these layers. You can also uh, use a, 
an eyelet, you can, you can use a brad, um, but I want to be able to just leave this bulb pin on here and then whenever I want to uh, hook it onto something I can. And you have an instant little charm. It took nothing. You saw what I used, just one of these images and a piece of quilted fabric and I'm good to go. So it can be just about anything that you have in your stash um, to make these. So because I have so many um, and so many uh, pieces of quilted fabric, I'm going to uh, continue on my own and maybe in a follow-up video I will show you um, that I've done at least, you know, 40 or 50, depending on how much I can get out of here. But they're pretty fast to make. And even these pieces that I got to go back and, and uh, restitch them just to get them uh, nice and flat and, and um, so that they're not so cushiony, um, I will do that as well. It really doesn't matter what color the thread is. You're not going to see it from the backside anyway. And it's just a great way to finish these. Now, I could um, stitch all around the, the uh, piece to give it a more finished, uh, you know, slow stitch look. But why bother? You don't see it anyway. It really doesn't matter. And this is just a, a quick project to use up what you have and what's on the table. If you don't have any little paper flowers, I've got um, some silk flowers here, like some little um, uh, crocheted flower, or not crocheted, um, machine applique flowers. Something like that could go on there as well. Um, or, you know, maybe you have some silk flowers. These just need to be glued and squished down a little bit more. And then what to do with these things? Uh, like I have another... Oh, here we go. These little, these little fabric flowers too are cute. And they can be colored in different colors. But it's whatever you have. So don't go out and, and rush to buy stuff. Use, you know, craft with your eyes wide open, as I always tell you. And use what you have. If you don't have... Um, trims, use braid, use wool, use uh, fibers, uh, make your own braids, use uh, pieces of fabric um, braided together or um, even cutting, uh, uh, tearing thin strips and just uh, layering different colors on there will make it look very scrappy and shabby. And, and so use what you have. Um, so, so that's it for my little tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed this. And what can you use these for? Well, they can be pinned on as a charm. They can be added onto an envelope as part of the closure to weigh it down. They can be used as a little element in the corner of a page, or they can be added on top of a tag as another uh, charm on a tag. They can become a tab on your, on your book page. So lots of different uses for them. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, that was just a little tidbit for you and a little bit of fun. So go out there and do something creative. I wish you all a creative day and a creative week. And I will see you all soon. Bye for now.